Neurological Disorders Lesson 4.4 Can Caffeine Treat Narcolepsy? The goals of this lesson are to develop students' understanding of the complexity of neural circuits and to introduce how drugs like caffeine can impact the functioning of neural circuits. At the end of this lesson, students should be able to describe the scientific findings with narcoleptic mice, dogs, and human patients, describe how caffeine works, and explain whether caffeine is an appropriate treatment for narcolepsy. We'll achieve our goals through a Socratic discussion and debate on caffeine as a treatment for narcolepsy. To prepare for this lesson, you'll need to review the key scientific concepts that are presented in it. They include narcolepsy, key scientific findings in mice, dogs, and human patients, the scientific approaches to studying disease, including animal studies versus human studies, and treatments for narcolepsy. We'll also discuss caffeine's mechanism of action, that caffeine inhibits adenosine signaling, and that adenosine levels increase throughout the day and when it binds to its receptors makes us sleepy. You can review the scientific content in the background reading provided to you in the teacher primer, the teacher manual, and the student workbook. The teacher primer provides in-depth knowledge about the scientific content presented in the lesson. The teacher manual or lesson plan provides a minute-by-minute -minute explanation of lesson structure, including instructions on how to manage the discussion and activity. And the student workbook provides additional explanation for your students. You'll need to be sure to print the homework worksheet for your students. The key points that the lessons do now are the effects of disrupting connections between components of the sleep-wake circuit, specifically that narcolepsy results when orexin neurons do not function properly. We'll get to these key points by reviewing last night's homework in which students analyzed original research. In the do now, students review last night's homework with a partner, making sure that they can answer the questions, what role does orexin play in the sleep-wake circuit, and how is orexin involved in narcolepsy? The key points of the lesson discussion are that disruptions in orexin signaling result in narcolepsy, specifically that removing orexin receptors in mice creates mice with narcolepsy symptoms, and that human narcoleptic patients have decreased levels of orexin neurons. We'll get to these key points with a Socratic discussion. The discussion starts with a review of orexin's role in the sleep-wake circuit, specifically that orexin neurons are stimulated by light and other cues that keep us awake, and so once stimulated, they stimulate the arousal neurons, which inhibit the VLPO neurons, and the effect is we stay awake. And when orexin neurons are switched off, they no longer stimulate the arousal neurons. When arousal neurons are not stimulated, they cannot inhibit the VLPO. So now the VLPO is active, it inhibits the arousal neurons, and we end up falling asleep. After you review orexin's role in the sleep-wake circuit, you'll review the scientific findings about orexin signaling and its involvement in narcolepsy. The students read about each of these findings in their homework last night, but because some students struggle to interpret scientific findings, it's important to take the time now to go over them together. First, you review what happened to Skeeter, that researchers determined that some dogs with narcolepsy have a mutation within their receptor for orexin, which means those dogs aren't able to detect orexin. Next, you'll review what happens when orexin receptors are removed in mice. The mice show symptoms of narcolepsy, indicated by more transitions between sleep and wakefulness than wild-type mice, and transitioning directly from wakefulness to REM sleep. Finally, you review what's different about the brains of narcoleptic patients. Narcoleptic patients have less orexin than normal, or non-narcoleptic patients. The key points of the lesson activity are caffeine's mechanism of action, specifically that caffeine inhibits adenosine signaling, and then adenosine levels increase throughout the day, and when it binds to its receptors, makes us sleepy. We'll get to this key point by brainstorming whether caffeine is a possible treatment for narcolepsy, and with a Socratic discussion. In the activity, students will discuss whether caffeine could be an effective treatment for narcolepsy. You'll ask them, if narcolepsy is a disorder where you fall asleep uncontrollably, could you use caffeine as a treatment? You'll give them five minutes to discuss this question with a partner and then lead a class discussion about their answers. To really address this question, we first must understand how does caffeine work, which you'll address on this slide. Caffeine affects the signaling of a neurotransmitter adenosine. You'll then use slides 10 through 13 to discuss how adenosine signals. First, that adenosine levels cycle throughout the day, with levels being highest right before we fall asleep and lowest right after we wake up. Then, that 
high levels of adenosine inhibit arousal neurons and activate the VLPO, which means that high adenosine levels put us to sleep. So when adenosine binds to its two receptors, we fall asleep. Slides 14 through 17 refocus the discussion on caffeine. First, that caffeine binds to the receptors for adenosine, but has no effect on the receptors. This means that caffeine inhibits adenosine's action. And if caffeine prevents adenosine from activating the VOPO and inhibiting the arousal neurons, the overall effect is that we stay awake. The next slide presents the sleep-wake circuit's many controls, which at this point of the unit include adenosine and orexin neurons. Now that we understand how caffeine affects the sleep-wake circuit, we can go back to address the question of the day, which is what we do in the wrap-up. The key points of the wrap-up are that despite caffeine's ability to inhibit adenosine, it's actually not an effective treatment for narcolepsy, and that strong stimulants are needed to treat narcolepsy. We'll get to these key points with a Socratic discussion. In the wrap-up, the class will refocus on the question of the day, could you use caffeine as a treatment for narcolepsy? After giving the students five minutes to discuss this question again, now armed with the knowledge of how caffeine works, you'll discuss the current treatments for narcolepsy, which include drugs that act as strong stimulants and behavioral remedies. The key point of the homework is to prepare for tomorrow's activity and the concept that neural circuits can regulate their output with feedback and feedforward inhibition. We'll get to these key points with a homework worksheet. In the homework worksheet, students will read about the biological clock, yet another control on our sleep-wake circuit, and one that includes feedback inhibition. Students often ask for more details about caffeine. You can find more in the teacher primer, teacher manual, and student workbook. One of the most common questions teachers get is, I have caffeine all the time. Why doesn't it keep me awake? The answer to this question highlights two important concepts we'll cover in more detail in Unit 5, tolerance and dependence. After repeatedly using a drug, and caffeine is a drug, tolerance is needing more of it to get the same effect. So someone who drinks quite a bit of coffee or has caffeine in other ways would need much more of it to keep them awake. Additionally, dependence is needing a drug to function normally. So for someone who has a lot of caffeine all the time, their body adjusts and biologically requires it to function normally. At the end of this lesson, students should further appreciate the complexity of our neural circuits, including the various components that make them up and how complex the various controls are for regulating their output. This lesson builds on the sleep-wake circuit discussed in the previous lesson. Additionally, it provides an example of a drug most students have experienced to lay the groundwork for future discussions about the effects drugs can have on our brains and behavior. And don't forget, if you have any questions, concerns, or feedback, to let us know. You can contact any of the CTSC team members, and we'd be more than happy to help you.